Hello, I'm Jarrett Roth. I am the manager of the Validation Application Specialists in North America. We're part of the HID Professional Services Group. Um, I'm happy to be here at HIDS 2021. Um, I wish we could all be here together, but unfortunately that's just not the case. Um, but I do have the distinct pleasure of talking today with Dr. Jessica Sparza from Northern Louisiana Crime Lab down in Shreveport, Louisiana. How you doing, Jessica? I'm doing well, how are you? I can't complain, just, you know, same old, same old, just a different day. Thanks for being here. And we're gonna be talking about validation, but beforehand, Jessica, why don't you just go ahead and introduce yourself to everybody? My name is Jessica Sparza. I am the DNA technical leader at the North Louisiana Crime Lab in Shreveport, Louisiana. Um, I have been here for 13 years. Uh, and uh, the DNA technical leader since uh, 2013. So I'm the one that is in charge of the validations that we do within our laboratory for testing new instruments, uh, new reagents, and that's about it. <laughs> awesome, well, thank you, Jessica, for introducing yourself. But let's talk about the validation and all the work that you did. Um, you know, there was a lot down there. So. So Jessica, can you maybe tell us a little bit about switching over to a new chemistry and like the whole end of submission? So our initial our intent was to validate a new quant kit, um, our current amplification kit, wi filer Plus, Quant Trio, uh, which is the new quant kit, um, on the 3500s. Um, we like our current amplification kit because it does have those quality sensors and that allows us to monitor uh, amplification efficiency on a per sample basis. So that was very appealing to us. And we were approached with this new kit, Verifiler Plus, as um, also having these quality sensors. And so we knew that there was going to have, we would have to do an end of submission. Um, and given everything that we were doing, it's kind of an overhaul of the system we went ahead and decided to uh, go ahead and take on the challenge of not only these new kits, but also trying to get Endis approval for Verifiler Plus. That, that uh, triggered us to come down, right? And hang out and help you guys bring all that stuff online. Yes. Um, so you guys were able to come to us and do all of the wet work. Um, I was the one that uh, basically wrote it up and did the actual submission. Um, and so we submitted in September of 2019 and received Endis approval uh, February of 2020. Yep, I remember it very well. It was a pretty large project where, you know, we did a lot of preliminary consultation, trying to make sure that we had the entire workflow put together because, you know, you guys had an automated workflow as well as a manual workflow. Yeah, we spent a lot of time trying to make sure that we met every, you know, QAS guideline. You know, we try to make sure that we met every expectation that you guys would have with all the different instrumentation and all the chemistry. So, you know, we really appreciate you guys letting us come down and, and work with you. So Jessica, maybe we can talk a little bit about just how we prepared this project. Typically with HPS, you know, we first start with uh, a customer consultation. So can you maybe talk a little bit about just how that consultation went? Yeah, so we wanted to try and automate um, using liquid handling systems, uh, incorporating those way more than what we are currently doing. And so we had... Uh, we did that as a workflow um, for two 3,500 instruments. And then we also did a manual workflow. So there were three workflows, one quantification kit, two amplification kit, one STR, one YSTR uh, on new instrumentation. So uh, it was it was a quite a large undertaking. We were able to work with Peter John McEnany and he was able to develop a workflow, which we call Quack, the Quant Amp CE <laughs> workflow, as a way to try and make the process a bit more seamless and uh, paperless. So we talked about you know, project planning. Uh, you mentioned how we were executing on the project with our wet work. And then obviously you got your reports. 
Um, there was a lot of reports as you listed all of the chemistries and all the instruments. So you guys had a lot of information to go through. Um, but we also then concluded with a teach back. And I was just kind of curious if you could maybe tell, tell me a little bit about the teach back, like how, how it went, maybe you know, what things were covered, you know, just in general. We had our teach back back in January of 2020. Um, this is prior to the shutdown um, with the COVID pandemic. Our intent was to be online with everything uh, in July of July 1st of 2020. We went through all of the actual science, the chemistries of all of the kits um, and went through uh, the validation data with the other analysts. And um, it was a great introduction into what we were going to be asking for of the analysts. Yeah, because there's a lot of data there, right? And so instead of sitting there and constantly reading a report over and over and trying to gather all that information, kind of is nice to have some, like a face come in and kind of talk about that report for you, break it down and allow you to ask questions in real time so that you can better understand the, the project that was put in front of you. So um, it's pretty cool. So thank you, Karn, and thank you everyone else that was a part of that. So I'm really curious to hear about quack because that's a pretty cool, pretty cool uh, term. So can you maybe tell me a little bit about that? Sure. So uh, Peter John McEnany, he developed this and I think he does this for uh, uh, several different labs, but we actually named it quack. What it does is it takes the samples from quantification all the way through CE setup. Uh, and so we're able to go from quant to pick the different amplification kits, depending upon what we're trying to amplify. And then there it'll, it'll help with us to set up our CE plate. So he made it very easy and very straightforward with the idea that we can just become a little bit more paperless. One of the potential issues is always like transcription errors, right? Especially when you're bringing on a new workflow like you guys did, where it's pretty much almost the entire workflow, right? Minus extraction. You know, there's, there's a lot that you have to remember. There's a lot that you have to make sure that it's, it's, it's set up the proper way. And then, so this little system is helping you kind of remove that responsibility of, of tracking the samples on paper and it keeps it in this system and allows it to flow from start to finish. So that's, that's pretty cool. Yeah, we are going to be starting a new project on Monday um, with the idea that we are going to push through 90 cases each. These are all going to be property crimes. Um, to try and develop data uh, that we can use to identify a stop at quantification concentration. We need to establish a new one to get through all those cases, but then we're also probably going to have to cull the data for several months to actually get that, that concentration. And we're trying to do this not just for the small autosomal, uh, but we were also trying to do this for a, a Y concentration as well, a male concentration. You're trying to figure out a way of triaging the amount of samples that you're processing. Cause you just said 90 samples between two of you. And my, my brain just almost exploded. Cause that's a, that's a lot of samples. And so this is a process that you're going to have to take or evaluate over you know, multiple months just to collect that data in order to identify where those profile or those concentrations are correlated to the profiles that you're getting? Is that how it typically will work? We have developed a mixture interpretation guidelines specific for Verifiler Plus based upon the validation data. I um, mean, this is all because of QAS that we have to do all of this. And so the idea is that we want to process a lot of these samples and then based upon our mixture interpretation data, ask a particular question, such as where do we see insufficient data per our definition? Theoretically, if we have enough data points, we can then say with confidence that anything at that concentration or lower um, isn't going to yield us a probative profile. And so we want to be able to say, okay, well, with all of this data, we can stop at quant. How about, how does that translate then into the, the verifier plus? What's the benefit of those, of those quality markers? You want to ensure that for a sample that has a very low concentration, that DNA is being amplified maximally. That's where the quality sensors come in. We can assess degradation, inhibition, or good amplification. And the good thing about those quality sensors is that they're unbinned. 
In our current kit, they are binned, but in Verifiler Plus, they're not. We know they're there and we can always check when we have those low uh, quantity samples to see whether or not we did have good amplification. And in fact, the the result is is real. And all this data is being generated on your brand new 3500s, right? To some, that's a little bit of a challenge and a little bit of a learning curve because they are quite different. But you know, how are things going with the, the new genetic analyzers? We had only been using one. We call them GA and GB. Uh, we've only been able to, we just reinitiated GB. GA has already been online and we are trying to um, get them ready for the big project for next week. So we're running performance checks. We've done all of the necessary service uh, that needs to be done prior to getting those up and running. They are so much easier to use than 3130s. We had a 3130 and a 3130 XL. And so now we have two 3500 eight cap uh, instruments and they are so much, so much nicer to use. So you're telling me that you're not going to miss making those buffers all the time for the 3130s? <laughs> I am refusing to uh, use 3130s anymore. I, I'm done with the old stuff. Now I'm on to the new stuff. With those new systems, you know, you do have that new data collection software, data collection 4.0, where we introduced the pull-up reduction algorithm. Have you evaluated or have you seen a reduction in pull-up compared from the 3130 in data? Obviously, they're two separate chemistries, but have you, have you seen a change in the amount of pull-up or editing that you guys have to do in your profiles? When you get to the uh, 0.5 nanogram input concentration, there is little to no pull up in those samples. Right now, we don't have a lot of data because we haven't officially started to use it in casework. Um, that's what this big project that we're starting on Monday is going to assess. We will get real data um, and we'll be able to look and see exactly how that reduction, that pull-up reduction is going to affect um, these, our casework samples. So hopefully, actually, by the time we present, I can tell you more about how it's going and what we've accomplished since we've recorded this. Yeah, I'm definitely looking forward to seeing what that, the data and the results. I take it as a personal um, goal in life to make sure that you guys get online just because of everything that you guys did down there and how accommodating you were to us. You know, we invested a lot of time down there and invested a lot of energy. So like, it kind of feels like even though this is your project, you know, we're just there to help facilitate it. I still take a personal, personal pride or a personal ownership of it as well, just because we get to hang out for so much, you know, for so long. And you guys were fantastic down there and very accommodating. We enjoyed having you guys there. I mean, you guys did a lot of work. The reports that we got back were intense. As the technical leader, it's my responsibility to go through all of the data and ensure that the results that um, you guys got, I was con I concurred. Instead of having the analysts read those three binders, <laughs> I, um, I kind of consolidated all of those. And that's what I did for all three of the validations with Quantrio, Wi-Filer Plus, and Verifiler Plus. That report that I consolidated went to and this COVID really affected us as far as progress and stuff. And, you know, I kept saying April 1st, April 1st, April 1st, and we were able to get online or officially like release it to the analysts to start their competency training um, because that in and of itself was quite large. And so we are online and ready to go. This has been a very long process for you guys. So I'm really excited to, you know, to, to see the data, to hear about, you know, this, the, the data coming off, the success stories, you know, and the cases that you guys are able to help solve. We've actually started to hear in HPS start talking about, you know, can we help enable customers with competencies? Like, can we create like a template that the laboratories can use to get their to get their people online because right you uh, not only did you have to deal with all of those reports but you had to build out the competencies you had to build out the lab practicals so you've been yeah you've been quite busy right not only did we have to do the reports but we had to develop interpretation guidelines for both kits. Then we had to decide, okay, what are we going to do as far as the competencies are concerned? As someone who worked with the validation, I mean, they're exempt uh, per QAS. So we were able to not have to worry about some of them, but then we had to develop tests. We had to develop um, practice samples, competency samples. And then that's just for the quack. 
and, and doing all the policies and procedures that go along with it. Then on top of that, we do have a mixture interpretation uh, test competency that we're giving the analysts. It's a massive undertaking for, for any lab, big or small, thinking up how to execute on a validation, but then to do the wet work, then to you know, analyze that data, then to make the reports, then to review the reports, and then to create competencies, to create lab practicals, to create interpretation guidelines. And we had a great validation team besides HPS. We had at the laboratory, we did have Michelle Jackson, DNA section supervisor. Ashley Brummett helped with a lot of the um, wet lab work, the validation part of it. And then Katie Treyweek helped with the mixture interpretation aspect. Um, for both kids. It was a collaborative effort. I did not do everything by myself. You know, you guys were amazing at helping out. And anytime I had a question, you were always there to help. Yeah, thanks. I mean, that's, that's the thing is, you know, once we walk out the door, we're not done. We know that there's a lot of other stuff that has to happen. We kind of take pride in, in, the, in that work. You know, we created all of that. We spent all that time. So we want to make sure that you guys are, are taken care of and you guys get online and you're successful. And yeah, definitely shout out to everyone in the lab. Again, you guys were awesome. Super um, welcoming. Thanks, Michelle, for letting me come in over the weekend to watch uh, the Texas A&M game with you. But yeah, no, it was it was a great overall experience. You know, everyone involved and just the, the coordination and the logistics that all came around. So you guys took a massive undertaking, not only from Quant and STR, but new instrumentation and new software. So what are you looking forward to in the future? Well, we have um, another project after our stop at Quant gets online. Um, we will likely move to new amplification or new thermal cyclers. So um, that's a new, another project that we will likely be validating. And we might reach out to you guys to come in and help with that. Well, just let me know what places are still open down there so I can start planning <laughs> out my food places. But I will be down there if you need me. Great plan. Great plan. Great plan. <laughs> so um, I, I, think, I, I think that um, having a validation team like HPS come into our laboratory enables me as a technical leader and other people on the validation team the ability to work on the policies and procedures that are required to implement the new technologies and reagents and, or instruments, whatever it is that we need to do. And it allows, uh, and then once we get the data back, then we can start looking at the data and ensuring that um, everything that we need to do has been done and write it. So it kind of gives us a bit of a reprieve to not have to sit there and do all of the lab work and come up with the experiments. And I mean, we know what experiments need to be done and because we've had these pre-meetings or these meetings prior to you actually physically coming to the laboratory. Um, but it's, it's a nice, it's nice. It, I think, I mean, the project in and of itself probably wouldn't have lasted as long as it did because of COVID. Um, but it, it, I think it definitely shortens the time that it takes to get something online when you have an HPS team helping out. Yeah. You know, it's, we love what we do. We love to see the new experiences and, and help people. Um, and, you know, I know that some people, you know, they, they like to do their validations on their own, but, you know, the value of us coming in and doing some of that grunt work for you guys, um, and then being able to present it out to, uh, to you through other reports and through the teach back, um, just to help get you guys online sooner so that you can keep doing the great work that you guys are always doing. Um, well, Jessica, thanks so much for taking the time to talk to me. It's great to see you. You know, it's been with COVID. It's, it's tough to get and get out there and see everyone. So this was, this was fun just to be able to just chat and reminisce. And I'm very hungry now thinking about all the food. <laughs> Again, thanks, Jessica, for taking the time to talk with me today. This is, this is great. Um, and now let's open it up for some live discussion. Uh, but beforehand, would you be comfortable if people reach out to you to contact for any reference or just any information pertaining to our conversation today? Sure. Anyone can contact me um, at my email address. It's jasparza, E-S-P-A-R-Z-A, at nlcl.org. And I will be happy to discuss this further. 
Awesome. And, you know, I'm also available at Jarrett.Roth at Thermo Fisher for any HPS questions that you may have. But let's go ahead and open this up to some Q&A.